up. So it's kind of a mess right now. Um, but we're really excited to show you all this cool hoopwire.com product. Um, and also to talk a little bit about where to put a hoop in a tutu, when to hoop a tutu, why is there a hoop in a tutu, does your tutu need a hoop, and all kinds of stuff. Um, let's see. We just did a Facebook Live thing because I'm afraid we've, like, gone over the limit that we're allowed. I thought we were allowed a much higher limit of people. So if you're seeing this right now, you were early and you're in the room. If you're if you're not seeing it right now, you'll get the video later. Um, we thought our limit was 100, and then I checked, and then I thought it was a 200, and now it might be that uh, some folks won't get to see this live. Um, but did I cover up my mic? But they'll get the video later for tonight, probably. It should be ready tonight. Look, I even got a hoop wire apron on. And shout out to the new American Midwest Ballet. I'm wearing your hat. And I have a Ballet Vero Beach t-shirt on. So I'm like as balleted up as I can possibly be today. Um, let's see. One of our regulars type into the comment thing just so Jared can see that we've got you. Actually, Janelle, if you just want to uh, do a little communication with Jared quickly. Um, but today we have a record number of folks. So this is kind of like how Halcyon Stage webinar goes. Welcome. Um, it's a lot of me and a lot of me like holding down the back of my shirt when I bend over so you don't see my muffin top. That's the first thing. But the second thing is um, we just do like show and tell and explain some stuff. And often our webinars are like, like 60 or less people. We're over the 100 today um, and even beyond that. So uh, limit your questions because it's more than Jared's very fast, but he also needs to, to move the camera around. Um, and uh, I'm going to cover a bunch of stuff. And we're specifically talking about hooping stuff today. So welcome all the new folks. If if there's a question you've got that's ballet or costume related or hoop, well, hoop related we'll take. But um, uh, if you have an unrelated question, just don't ask it because we've got to get through a bunch of other stuff. And then um, for the new folks too uh, that have never done a webinar, um, it, you'll you'll have seen the process today of like how you log in and the registration link and stuff. Um, but let's get started with a story. So I don't know how many years ago, but maybe Janelle does. Um, the hoop wire seemed to disappear from the planet. I was working at that time at the Joffrey Ballet. This has been oh, quite a while ago. Um, and I started getting phone calls from different shops around America asking if I had any of the good hoop left. And what they mean by the good hoop is sprung steel that's plastic coated. So I kind of thought, oh, this is a panic. I'm going to hold on to my good hoop like it's gold. And I wasn't sharing it with anybody. Uh, and kind of in the hooping diaspora, or I don't know if that's the right word, um, in the disappearance of the good hooping, we started using the fabric coated stuff, which is like similar to this, but the problem with the fabric coated stuff is the metal, the steel wasn't sealed. And if you worked somewhere humid like Houston or Florida or the West Coast or in a, on a sailing ship, um, it would start to rust. So you'd make your beautiful white swan tutu, put it away for a couple seasons, dig it back out, and you'd have this brown rusty ring dripping through the netting um, because that stuff rusted. Uh, but we're real excited to show you all the new hoop wire stuff today. But um, let's, did Janelle, Janelle's allowed to type as much as she want. Um, Janelle uh, and her husband, John, are the, the brains and wizards behind um, bringing the this, this sprung steel hoop plastic coated hoop back and um, through some other things that have disappeared from the planet I've learned a lot of these products at different times in the last few decades w such a large amount was manufactured that the machines that made stuff was repurposed because everybody had a warehouse full of it 
and then all of a sudden it started to disappear. Like there was a time where the cotton cording that we like for piping, gone from the whole world, but then it came back. So we're grateful for that. Um, let's look at some tutus and then let's look at some hoop. Um, so, and, and we've got a hoop skirt up here too, a little sample of a hoop skirt. If you wanna flip it around here. Um, so the first thing that I've seen that comes up in different forums, cause like I watch, watch them all like hawk, is there's been a discussion about like, well, can't you just use steel versus the this sprung steel? So the sprung steel means it always kind of has an outward force to it. What happens when you, and this is a teeny sample, this is like a half size model. What happens if the steel isn't sprung, it's really denty and collapsy. Like you shouldn't, we shouldn't be able to smash this uh, kind of pannier styled hoop skirt in easily, but when it's the sprung steel, it just doesn't have any outward strength to it. And the other thing that happens with the sprung steel is once it gets dented, that's kind of it. So you see, I was able to pretty easily put this great big dent in there. Oh, she decided she's done. So this, what's nice with the sprung steel is it kind of, it kind of bounces back. And at a ballet, you know, if your female's got a hoop skirt and she's slamming into a guy and getting thrown through the air, you don't want her tutu to dent and then just stay dented. So, so that's a little, that's a little bit of that. Here, I'll give Couture this to take out of the way. Thank you. So then um, let's look at kind of a good, nice flat tutu. And this one's, uh, this tutu is hooped with the hoopwire.com hoop. It has a little bit of bounce. It's nice and flat. When we smash it, check this out. You can totally wrap this up and shove it in a suitcase or a box. It totally bounces back because it's got the sprung wire in it. Like I've even folded these into tiny figure eights, shoved them in the smallest box I can because when we're shipping stuff overseas, um, you know, you don't want to ship a giant picture frame box. You want to ship a small box because the shipping is going to cost a ton. And what's nice too with this sprung steel is um, you don't have to take the hoop out to send it. And I, I used to take the hoop out like at the time where we were using the not so great stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, you can just shove this stuff in a box. It's great. Then let's look, and this hoop, um, since we're covering a couple things today, this hoop is like halfway out the skirt. So the hoop is kind of at the limit of the decorations because that's what's going to weigh the skirt down. Um, so this, this hoop under here is about halfway out the tutu. It's right there. We're going to look closer at some of these in a bit to hold up the decoration. Now, if you had even heavier decoration, you can cheat and put the hoop a little bit further out. But what you've got to remember is can your dude handle the hoop and can your your um, uh, ballerina handle the hoop? And if they're a leery or you're in a company where they're like, no hoops, no hoops, um, you might scoot the hoop in a little bit. So there, you know, there's some trial and error with that. I'm gonna give you that one. This is an old tutu. It's got kind of a flappier version. This one was made kind of when all the good stuff disappeared and we were just using this flat steel stuff, which folds some, but do you see how this one doesn't just spring back like the one we just had? It dies a little bit. Um, and, and I honestly think that like when the good stuff started going away, um, people would talk about a taco tutu because that's what happens if the hoop isn't right you end up with this kind of taco-y look, look where the front and back fall like a taco or the worst is when they're dancing and it would taco from side to side. Can you imagine being the girl and getting the production photos of this awful floppy thing? Um, do you have enough charge? We're getting a charger for the computer. You've got enough? Cool. Um, so so the, what could rescue this old tired thing is put the new hooping in it, right? And the other thing that happens, um, we call it lamp shading. And what's funny is this one was really lamp shady earlier, but now that I've been messing with it, it's not. Lamp shading is where the tutu starts to break over the hoop and dies. So there's more than one rescue for that. The first one is to scoot the hoop 
further out. So if it's breaking over the hoop and you've got kind of like a crease, you know how creased paper has a memory? If your tutu is lamp shading, one thing is to take your hoop out, untack a couple layers, and scoot the hoop a little further out. And you can also combine that with scoot the hoop a little bit further out and maybe put one new layer of stiff netting in there or replace a couple layers. And you can actually just cross stitch new netting in by hand. And actually this, this gal here, she's had uh, a couple new top layers put in it a few times in her history. I don't know if it'll show on the camera, but you can see there's like two different brighter sections and those came at different times. Um, let's get that one out of the way. Oh, she bit the dust. Oh, and so did the camera. We're coming back. We're coming back. Whoo. I yanked my mic cord and the puppies here. So um, we're back. We're back. Right? That's just how this goes. It's like you're hanging out with a maniac, which is me. But now, look, this girl's completely dead. She's not even just lampshaded. She's like, there's lampshade. She's not even tacoed. She's got like a triple, she's got like a triple taco going on. Like she has folds within folds in the hoop. So swapping this hoop would flatten it out considerably. And also the placement of the hoop would help a lot. So um, let's look first at the different uh, things that you can get from hoopwire.com. Oh, there you are. I'm going to give you that one. Let's look at it one more time now. Isn't it cute? This is like my favorite Capella tutu. It's very Eastery. It's very cute. Like the puppy's interested only when we're doing stuff like this. Um, okay, so let's check out the stuff that you can get from hoopwire.com. Oh, and actually, um, Katura, in the sink, there's a, a bowl full of water in there. Would you just dump half of the water out and bring me that and the little rig in there back? Um, so they have great stuff. You can get the hooping um, by the foot, by the yard. By the foot, by the yard. We'll let Janelle answer that one. What I do know is the more you buy, uh, the cheaper it is. If you get um, 500 feet, I believe it's 15% off or something. By the foot or by the roll. You can buy it by the foot or by the roll. So go to hoopwire.com. It's all there. But I do know... Um, if, you, if you're making a lot of tutus or a lot of hoop skirts or a lot of bustles or a lot of, we've got a jellyfish hanging up there, we'll show you later. Um, uh, if you're using it often, just buy the roll. We're, we're almost done with our great big roll and I'm getting ready for a new one. So you can buy it by the roll. Best thing ever, which I jumped up and down for, is you can now buy it in black. Oh my gosh. Right. We're going to show you how to dye this stuff, too. But black always like comes out like kind of purple. So if you're making a black swan or a carabas or an evil witch, get the black. And actually that little thing bouncing around in there, we'll look at too here in a minute. That's a connector to connect the backs. So you don't even have to dye a connector. So if you buy a kit to hoop a single tutu, you can get a single connector to join the hoop. You can also buy the connectors in in larger quantities, I believe it's six, six in a pack in black and uh, the ivory, the like nude, the hooping nude, like the neutral color. Neutral, that's a good word. So you can get a kit in white, which also has a connector in there. And you can buy the separate connectors. So um, the separate connectors are great if you decide to like enlarge your hoop or shrink your hoop. You might need a new connector or um, you can probably reuse the connector that you've already got in the tutu if you're careful when you separate the two things. So that's kind of like the, 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 the main products, but like the star floating here in water, because we rinsed it off, and we're going to look at this real close. They have a stainless steel jig that you can wind the hooping in for when you dye it which is like, yes, I used to do it with binder clips. And then it would always somehow come undone in a bowl of boiling water and splash um, boiling dye water around me and around the room. 
So we love this thing. It's so cool. And let me show you how to use it right now. So would you grab me, Katura? Just hand me those um, paper scissors over there. I need some craft scissors. So I'm going to bust open my kit for 122, my white here. And we're going to look at some of the different dye stuff. And I spoke to one of the, like, top people at Rit Dye today, and I learned something new that I did not know about one of their dyes. And I'm going to share it with you. Don't lose your connector. And actually, in the tomato over there, bring me, like, the biggest, thickest needle just with some um, string on just some thread on it. Just a big, fat needle and a binder clip. Um, Let's cut this apart. How's it going? I got a peek on the screen here really quick. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're not losing people, so it must be all right. And, of course, it's spring now, and we've got the window open, and you can hear the trains whizzing by. Woo! There you go. That's, that's how springy this stuff is. It's great. So what you're going to do with your rig is, so we've got a purple tutu back there and kind of a creamy ivory fuchsia purple pink tutu. Um, so we're going to look at different casings in those and we're going to dye the hoop for the purple one. And I've already got hoop dyed for this pink one, but it's so easy. You just start in the middle, or you could start at the outside and work your way inside either way. And I just wind it around in the direction that the hoop is going. And you've kind of got to like think about the size of container you're going to dye it in. If I was doing this on the kitchen stove, I might not have a dye pot that can take it super wide, but there's enough, um, there's enough placements here where you can get it pretty close. And you don't want it touching each other. You want to make sure that there's a little bit of air between them so the dye can kind of circulate around and also so that um, uh, you don't get white spots. So I kind of tucked my end in there, but now I just want to kind of go back and adjust it around so that I've got, so that I can see through all of it. You could even wind it a little bit looser. But I figured out earlier today, um, I'm just using a stovetop electric griddle fry pan, um, you know, uh, kitchen helper here to do it. And I figured out how many twirls I need to do. So um, we are going to use just some regular RIT dye in there to kind of make a purple. And I would say that when you're doing this stuff, I'm going to get this chair out of my way. When you're doing this stuff, the the netting is also going over your hoop so you don't like don't get mired in perfection grab me one of those towels from on top of the dryer thank you it takes a herd of people to make this happen you guys um don't like fret over getting the exact color because it ain't going to happen and that's time you can spend decorating things or making tiaras or finishing your hoop skirt whatever it is, um, just go for close. So I'm gonna try to kind of make lavender um, with a little bit of purple and a little bit of hyacinth to give it that kind of more blue purple. Like we're trying to make like lilac or you know old grape or something here. Then you wanna stir that up. And I had a stirrer here. Don't eat out of this later unless you have a lot of unexpected company and you've got to have the pan. Just rinse it good. No, really, don't eat out of it. So what we're going to do is put that down in there. But I also want to do my connector at the same time. So I've got my little connector there that's going to connect the ends of our hoop. I'm just going to thread through some thread here. Because earlier... Um, I actually dumped one of these down the sink because I wasn't paying attention. I lost it in the pot. So for me to keep my sanity is to just, you know, make like a little fish in a pond kind of thing here and clamp that in the side. Now, depending on what kind of dye you're using, do samples. Cut a small piece of hoop, try it out. And I also, um, the connectors change color a little bit quicker 
So I'm gonna get distracted and forget to look at my little connector here, um, but we'll come we'll come back to it in a little while. Um, just give it a little zhuzh around there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And when this is done, we're gonna rinse it in cold water and dry it off. Um, you can also, if you're like really into chemicals and stuff, you can wipe the hoop off with acetone or just wipe it with a wet rag to kind of just clean it off from travel a little bit. Um, but I, I find that I, I was able to get great colors with all of it uh, without even pre-cleaning it. Um, so we're gonna have to come back to this. So check it more often than I am. So the regular writ takes a little bit longer to process and we messed with it today between like 200, uh, like actually like between 190 and 250 is where we've kind of been messing with it. Um, but as long as you're like watching it, you're gonna be okay. And I'm not gonna watch it. So we're probably gonna get like grape soda purple here. Um, so that's the regular writ. And I've got some blue regular writ that I did here earlier today, and the color turned out fabulous. This is just royal blue, but you'll see, oh, actually, and look at the connector match pretty darn well. And don't even worry if it doesn't match perfectly, because it doesn't matter, it's going inside a tutu. Um, but the connector, watch, it will die just a little bit faster. So actually, our purple connector, we're gonna let him go for just a second more, but I might forget it. Um, and that's with the regular blue dye. So what I found out is just the regular, um, the, this dye is a union dye, which means that there's like a whole bunch of stuff in it that will try to get it to stick to something. Um, and the regular writ, you can go to their webpage, which is really helpful. Dyes, cotton, linen, silk, all this other stuff, right? Like you don't even need to see that. But the regular writ dyes that much stuff. But what we use pretty often and is, and is a more favorite of mine, which I didn't even realize that it was slightly different than the regular RIT, is the RIT Pro line, which has more chemicals in it. So right, I should be wearing a respirator or something, but we do have the window open. Um, the Pro line dye, so it's like, see it says down there, Pro line. You've gotta buy it a pound or five pounds at a time. But when I talked to, I'm gonna say Mr. Ritt, I don't know who I spoke to earlier, they, I was telling them what we were doing and the results I got between the two. The Proline one has uh, chemicals in it for polyester, and he says there's a chemical in there, I'm pointing at something you can't read, for plastic. There's actually a chemical mix in there that's geared to dye stuff on plastic. So whereas my blue there had to sit for for not a long time, like maybe 10, 10 or less minutes, I was able with the Pro Line Rit to get this beautiful fuchsia pink, this finky color um, in just, you know, not very long at all. I would say I was able to get this under a minute. And you can see here, I should have pulled this connector out a little bit sooner, but in a tutu, totally great to go. So that's the Rit Pro Line. And I don't have it here, uh, but Rit also makes a Rit for synthetics. I think it's called Rit Synthetics. Somebody will know and will send some more info. Um, that probably works better than this one because the synthetic one would cover polyester, which is more of a plastic, like what's covered on the hoops. Um, someone has the name. Dye more. Dye more. Dye more. It's got like a diamond on the bottle. Um, then just for fun, I was playing with some of our Jacquard acid dyes. And that's a that that's a dye where you've got to put vinegar or with it, with it, or um some depending on what kind of dye you're doing, there's like different like accelerants to make it happen. Um the Jacquard acid dye, I got a pastel, a more pastel color and it had to sit longer, but I bet if I whacked the heat up and let it go uh, a little bit hotter, I would be able to get more, you know, this broadcasts that it's emerald green, which I've got like, I've kind of, I'm close, but I'm not rich enough or dark enough, so that's the Jacquard acid dye. But I also, um, Janelle said, she was right, she knows her stuff, um, she said use the eye dye poly. Unfortunately, I only have an awful color um, from when we did stuff for the movie Chirac. Uh, we did a lot of army green stuff. But I cranked the heat up till I was like, 
I actually made my dye pot boil and then I turned it back down. And I bet this was done in like 15 to 20 seconds, maybe a smidge longer. And that's the eye dye poly. Now, when you get a dye that's got like a two part chemical, it's just like a good warning, like open the window, put on a respirator, uh, spend one year less on the planet. But the, the eye dye poly worked really great. And actually we've dyed um, buttons for men's shirts with this stuff when we couldn't get shirt buttons that we needed. So that's, that's those different things. And let's have a look here at our, ooh, our purple's turning out really, really good. So there, there's our purple. And actually, I put in quite a bit of dye. So if you wanted to like get a, a paler version or a softer pastel version, don't just dump in a whole bunch like I did. You know, instead of doing a test, I went right for it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to some cold water, just across whatever I've got here. And we're going to rinse it off a little bit. Oh, I bet the connector is like super purple. Let's see what the connector looks like. It's super purple. But, you know, I said I wasn't paying attention and that's what was going to happen. Um, let's unplug this so that we don't. And let's put a lid on it too. Another great thing is a turkey roasting oven. It's perfect because it's big. Now, what are we doing? I've totally lost my train of thought. We've got our purple going. Okay. You just want to rinse it really, really good because you don't want any of those leftover chemicals coming off. And then, you know, when I talked to Rit today, I was trying to get like some super precise answer. And the guy there said what I tell people all the time, just try it with everything and see what happens, you know. So it's good that our like guess and test method is also, um, you know, what an expert would say. So the first thing we want to do is wipe it off real good. And actually, I would say let it dry. Like I haven't, I'm not going to like have enough time to let this like really, really dry. Because um, we're going to put a connector on it. On the screen I'm looking at, it came out, it's looking blue, but it's actually quite purple. Um, so for the tutu we're doing, I could have done it a little bit less time. But I was fired up. And I would say too, if you, you know, if you're often, if like YAGP rolls around and you're always making a red tutu or a pink tutu, just spend a couple hours dyeing a whole bunch of stuff and then you'll be set for a long, long time. So we're going to dry that off. None of the color comes off. It's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, and then my connector, I'm going to wish I'd dried off a little bit more. I wish I'd have taken it out of the water a little bit sooner, but that's all right. No live TV, folks. Um, we'll pretend that dried it off. Oh, I bet that was awful, me blowing right in the mic. Oof. Sometimes you can hear my stomach in these things. Um, okay, so let's get ready to put this hoop in one of our tutus over there. Um, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. So the connectors fit really, really good. They have, um, they kind of have a bump in them. I don't know if it shows or if I need to put white behind it. They've got a bump in it that fits real snug around the steel. But um, I'm always nervous with people on stage. And I've actually been to some professional companies where a girl is pirouetting and out the side of her tutu, you start to see this little, you think it's a sparkle or something. But however, they've hooked the, the hoop, whether it's tape, or like the old fabric stuff, we would stitch through it or, a, or something joining it. If they're pirouetting and you see that hoop poke out, you get real nervous. Um, you know, so we don't want that. So what we're going to do and what they say to do too is to, um, first we want to mark about a half of an inch. We don't want to push this all the way through. We only want to push it part way through. And I should let my connector dry a little bit. But I've got a glue gun going here, and I'm going to in my hole. I don't want to push glue all the way through. I just want some at the entrance there, and I'm going to work this in. Oh, it is pretty snug. So, oh, good. That sets up really, really fast. So what's nice, too, with the connector in a hoop is gone are the days of looking for the one pen cap 
in your house because who's writing with pens anymore? And, you know, just this morning we were cleaning and Katura found a handful of pen caps. And I was like, oh, don't throw those out. Um, but you don't, you don't have to have pen cap fear with the connector. So let's come over to the table over here. And um, would you snag me just any big towel? Even that white towel right there is good. So let me undress the dress. Oh, like the dog, the dog is like all about the hoop hanging down here. Thank you. Let's unpin this girl. We're gonna come. Yeah, we're gonna come. We're gonna come right here. Will that be good, or is that too far away? We're checking out the limits of our new setup. Yay. Okay. So we're not going to tack this sucker because that's a different thing at a different time. And we do have a tacking webinar if anybody's interested. But today is all about the hoop. And I think on our webpage somewhere, there's even instructions for your own rotating ironing board. Not totally sure, but I think there is. Um, so, right, so you can pre-steam your tutu. You can get it all hooked up. Um, and actually, hand me the bosque there and some pins. Um, one thing, as, so you can do this on a dress form. You can do it on a, on a trunk form. You know, like if you've got a form that's just a little butt, that's super great. I've in the past used underwear forms, um, you know, from like the mannequin supply store, if your city's got something like that. But um, uh, you will want to get your bosque actually sewn on or you can take a ribbon and stitch it or, or safety pin it around the tutu to keep it from growing. Because when we're putting the hoop in, we don't want to stretch the tutu out like larger than the hoop wants to allow. So since we're just live, we're not really going to sew this on. In some of our classes, we would, some of our longer ones. Um, so you want to get that secure before you really go to town. And I see, I thought I had everything. I need just some elastic, like half inch elastic. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift everything up to get to our hoop casing. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different ways to do hoop casings. And we'll kind of like at the table here when this is done, I will just kind of like explain those different things for you. And I have a handout. So I'll just send everybody a handout on that. Um, just something so I can tie this up is all. And grab me those scissors. That is perfect. Or as I like to say, it's perfect, but it'll have to do. Okay, so I just want to make a little loop. So you can tack on a dress form. You can tack on a table. Over, over the years I've been making tutus, I've learned how to do it really well on one of these little spinning ironing boards. And I've... I'm able with practice, right? Everything takes practice um, to change the shape of the tutu pretty fast with how I tack it and how I hoop it. Um, so you can make a, you know, if you've got a flat tutu this year that you want to repurpose into more of like an English bell, what are you going to do? Oh, she found a squeaky. Our cute puppy is here for class. Usually she's barking. I jinxed it. Um, so like, right, if I had a really, really flat tutu this year, a pink tutu that I've got plate number new on, and I want to make it uh, a more cute, floppy uh, bell tutu next year, I might not need the hoop, pull the hoop out, or what you might need to do actually most of the time is just scoot the hoop in a little bit, and you can retack a couple layers to train it uh, into that bell shape. So kind of the hoop placement, the closer the hoop is to the high hip, the closer your hoop is to their body, the more um, droop you will start to get and the more eventual possibly lamp shade you will have. But you also can't put the tutu super duper far out. So I generally shoot for that the hoop is somewhere in the middle of, of the operation, knowing that it could scoot in and could scoot out. So this first casing that we're going to put our hoop wire.com hoop in here um, is an, a really easy one. And let me actually grab for the tutu, tutui folks. We've got some historical reenactors. We've got some fashion people. Um, I know we. I've got one friend that makes stuff that's like carnival styled, and they're like tutus. Yeah, but it's it's all good education. Um, so for the for the more tutui folks, 
this product isn't just for choo choos. Um, we made a small pink one and a purple one this morning. So I've got my rows on the panty and I've got my length. So we're going two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches, 13 inches, 14, 15, 16. But why do I have 16 written next to 13 here? What we did for, so this seven is where my hoop is. Um, what we did, we want it to be 13 inches, but instead of applying a strip, you know, there's the kind where you like cut a three inch strip and stitch it on the net. We cut our 13 inch piece, 16 inches, and folded it. So see, we folded it here, and then we stitched it an inch and a half. So an inch and a half here, and an inch and a half underneath makes three inches. So it made our 16 inch thing go down to only 13. And I started doing this this way when I, a long time ago, learned how to make tutus. Um, we were using timers to figure out how long different steps took. And then when I got into the bigger shops, um, I was kind of figuring out like, where are we losing time across the board where we could shave off a little bit, but still make a good quality product. And the second stitch on, on the applied strip, so when you apply the strip, you have to measure, stitch one side, pin or freehand, stitch the other side. With this strip, you just put a tape on your machine, figure out where you're folding it, and you only stitch one time. So that, that looked like a lube gesture. It was number one. Um, with my, I should have put gloves on. Um, so that's like a time saver. So what we did is 16, added three inches, folded away the three inches right where we want our hoop casing. And we want the hoop casing to be buried between the layers that are underneath it and the layers that will lay down on top of it. So, you know, kind of like look at your math a little bit and check. And the other thing I do is we just set all the layers together on the table and I just kind of like look at the pile of layers and go, oh, that's where the hoop is going to go. Then you don't even have to worry about it. But with the connector, we've got our connector glued on. We're going to find the hole in our casing. Oh, it slides through so nice. Oh, this is great. Gone are the pen cans. And right, you're like, why did he dye that purple when he's putting it in a pink layer? The majority of this sucker is purpley. Um, so we're, we dyed the hoop to match kind of the overall color mix rather than to match the exact layer. And I did overdo it. I should have pulled it out a little bit sooner. But it's definitely better than white. And it's definitely better than black. So once you get that all the way through, pull out some extra because you've got this hot mess, you've got this hot mess of netting, and the net slides so nice on the hoop, because it's kind of got like a, a shine, it's like a good slick plastic. So then you wanna just kind of zhuzh, zhuzh your layers. And we want enough hoop that it's not scrunching it in, and we don't want so much hoop that it's making this look um, like a, a Pringles potato chip. Um, anybody who's dealt with that in a tutu will know what I mean. You don't want a Pringles. You don't want a Pringles tutu. So pass that around. And then now is a moment where I would go to the iron, but I'm not going to. And I would start to give all of this some steam. They, oh, you read my mind. Um, so you'll want to give this some steam, start to let it relax some, and if you've got too much, it will do this. If you've got too much, it will want to raise up. So you need just the right amount. And actually, um, if I was going to put this on a girl, right, if I was going to go fit this somewhere, I would first just kind of loosely, loosely, loosely tape. Oh, I pulled it so far, I pulled it through. I would just, with a, just a little piece of scotch tape or something, I would tape this together before the fitting. And then in the fitting, if her tutu isn't laying at the level I want, I'm able to increase or decrease the circumference of the hoop, then you're gonna finish it off. And actually this one, I think, is only 
see it's raising up just a little bit. So I'm gonna shrink my hoop just a tiny bit. And I, we started with seven feet, which is what they suggest for a 15 inch tutu. And this is a 15 inch tutu, so it's pretty spot on. But I'm gonna shave off, see it wants to raise up. I'm gonna just undo this in my center back. Look, just taking away three inches. I don't know if that shows on the camera. There's, there. look here, show it so they can see the outside edge. Back up, thank you. So when I've got too much, it wants to levitate. And if I fold away just three inches there, it starts to calm down and lay down. And that's what we want it to do. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna look at where my connector is, where I want it to close. And I'm gonna add just about a half of an inch back because a half of an inch is gonna go in the connector. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of hot glue. Do, 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 do. Oh, let's see if I've got enough length. I do, I do. You could unplug it even. Thanks. It's like Julia Child's people sitting behind the counter. So I'm gonna put just a dot in there. You, we don't need it again, so you and then push that in there, and it sets up pretty quick. But look, and it makes a nice continuous circle. It's not going in some weird direction. So we would then, from here, give this layer some steam, and then however you tack, go to town. So me, I steam this layer, I lay the next couple layers down, I steam them, I lay the next couple layers down. But the purple, Having that purple in there, if you get right from the top, go right from the top down, it completely disappears. So if this were white, it would probably show through a little bit, um, uh, which is okay. But just having it tinted the tiniest bit really makes it go away. And the underside will show until this is done being tacked. But let's look at the underside here. So get right on, get in this section right here where I'm kind of holding it down. It really, it actually, it goes away more than I thought it was going to. Here we need some zhuzhin around. But if you, if you imagine that this is tacked, once it gets tacked, that hoop is going to go away completely. Um, so awesome, awesome, awesome. So that's um, connecting your hoop around with the connector on a dyed hoop. Let's do this other pink one. So going there, I'm going like real fast because we haven't done a webinar for a couple days and I'm like Bruh. And tomorrow we're getting mountains of fabric and laces and trims. I'm so excited. Uh, once you glue the yes. In, we'll, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've got incoming info. Uh, how do you take it apart for changing all terrain? So good question. I knew somebody was going to ask it. Once you glue it in, how do you take it apart? Earlier, I was able to just like Superman one apart, but what I would say is probably take a little bit, a hair dryer and warm it up just enough. You would want to warm it up enough to not melt the connector, but warm it up enough to undo the hot glue. Or if you were making the hoop smaller, just cut each side of the connector and put a new connector on because um, they come in a bag of six. Good, good question. I know it's like, wasn't the magic wand answer, but I think it's an okay answer. Um, Look at this cute thing. Okay, this is an itty bitty tutu, um, which, right, we've been doing spring cleaning and we're getting more stuff tomorrow. So there's going to be more stuff on the rummage sale page if anybody was following that stuff. Um, and we've shipped out a bunch of rummage sale stuff, but we've got more to ship. So if you're like, I haven't seen my invoice for shipping yet, it's coming. It's coming. When we sell stuff cheap, uh, it takes me a little longer to get to the post office. Okay, so let's put a towel in here or put it on a dress form. Stick with how you like to do this stuff. You could put the hoop in and then move to a dress form. Um, oh, the colors of that just turned out so cute. She's like little Bo Peep on top, but she's like, you know, mad, uh, mad hot lover underneath. That didn't sound right. I was going to say Mad Hot Cheerleader, and that's not right either. So I won't say either of them. Um, so you'd want to get all of this secured, because when we put the hoop in, 
we don't want to stretch the waist out. So we're going to imagine that's on there. But look at the top of that. Look how nice all those colors come together with that little, like the Bosque's got that like little bit of pinky stuff in there, which is what we're trying to do here. But underneath, she's like not quite a bullseye, but she's ready for the Valentine's Day ball. Um, let's shove a hoop in it. It's like put a bird on it from Portlandia. Okay, so I this is the one that went really super fast. This was the RIT Proline die. And actually, I could have probably even um, pulled it out a little bit sooner. But we were going for, for pinky purple, and it worked pretty darn well. So I'm happy with this. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tie this puppy up. And I'm going to show you a different, right? I'm taking credit for it. Katura sewed this in. Um, she cut and ruffled it all, too, while I um, did other things. I did book stuff, which is so exciting. Um, we're doing books. We've been doing books. It's actually just really seems real now. Really, I've been like working on a book for two decades. It's just now actually showing up. Um, okay, so right, again, this layer is pretty darn pink, and I've got kind of a pinky purple thing on it. I was just going for something that's kind of between the two, and it's going to totally disappear. But have a looky in here. So what we did, so the first casing we looked at was one where you add three inches and fold it away to make a casing. And the casing, let's pull this one back. After you're done steaming it, this casing just lies underneath between a couple layers and, and goes away. So that casing is under on the underside of the net. This one... We ruffled two layers at the same time. So um, what we did is we joined the ruffled edge. So there's, see, there's two layers here. Let's count. This is one, two, three, four. This is our, oh, actually, if I, five and six. If I look at my notes for this one, we've got one and two ruffled together, three and four ruffled together. Five and six is where our hoop is. And really the hoop and something, this, this tooch is only 12 inches out from the high hip. Um, well, 11 and a half because the seam allowance. This could go between four and five or five and six. It just kind of depends. Um, so instead of applying a casing or a fold, we stitched the short or the hip edge together of five and six. Then we went out to where the furthest place we would ever put a hoop is and stitched a line. Then Katura stitched another line and she stitched another line so that this gives you a little option for if you want to move the hoop uh, further out or closer into the tutu. And this is like on small scale. When I first started making tutus um, at Omaha Theater Ballet, we would do this in this layer. And then if the tutu had a top plate or something covering up the net on the top, we would even go further out on higher up layers so that over the years, you know, your sugar plum might get worn by girls with different hoop appetites um, and it might die over time. If you've got a casing further up, it's super great. And further out, you can just slide the hoop out and put a new one in. So let's just start putting a hoop in this one. And so, so there's the casing between layers, but this is like a multi-casing. This is like a couple casing options. Oh, it just glides in there. I didn't glue this one on. Glue it on first before you start to slide it in. So same thing. And as you work this one through, you'll see that the one we did with the fold, the netting wanted to stand up. Once you steam that other one, the netting will lay down. This one, where it's just a casing, uh, the netting starts to behave yeah, even faster. It takes a little less time with the steaming. And, um, you know, I, one thing with steaming that people have asked me uh, in different classes and, and settings is, you know, do, you, do I pre-steam stuff? I sometimes will pre-steam a layer to get it to lie down. But generally, I like the tutu to be kind of as fluffy as possible so that when I'm tacking it, I can more, I have more control over the shape. So look at that. And just that, that quick dip in the RIT Pro line. Um, and then once we lay our other layers down onto there, even two layers, it starts to go away. It's kind of going away with two layers. But once we put the, the top net layer 
and our tool layers on there, it completely disappears. So your hoop can go higher in the tutu if you've got like a beaded lace or a top plate covering it up. It should go a little lower than the middle or at the middle if it's just gonna be raw net. Like if there were just a couple, if this was it, if this is all we had going on, you can kind of see the hoop. Personally, I don't mind seeing the hoop because I think it gives it that like kind of engineery look like people can look at it and go, yeah, that's a lot of work. I get it. Um, but if this was it, you could even put the hoop a little bit further down um, in the tutu. Now, I will, I, Janelle, we're going to check in with Janelle. I've got a couple more things to show, but have I missed something that we talked about earlier from Janelle? If she gives me the thumbs up, I will move on. Probably everybody's like, slow down. It's like, oh, yeah? That was my face hit up. Oh, that's all right. It was Jared, not the dog. Um, oh, she says, no, great job. So let me show you some other stuff, right? Hoopwire.com. They even sent an apron. Um, we love it. We've been using the great big spool. I think got us through one and a half years of uh, competition stuff. And this year we did like YGP and then we did more YGP and then we did some more YGP. And then last week we did some YGP. <sighs> it's over. Thank God. Um, but let me show you something else that you can do with a hoop and a tutu. Where's that really pretty one? Will you bring me the really pretty one? There's the puppy. Come here, Taylor. Come knock the camera down again. Yeah, that one's perfect. I'm going to see if I can get it on this dress form. Boom. Unwind. Um, let's see. This, The top plate on this one isn't hooked down. It's not completely done. It was made for a gala. It was made by some people that might be here today. Um, uh, Katie and Tracy <laughs> and Rachel worked on this. Um, but it was for a gala, and then they were like, no, we've got a costume for her. So what happened is we made the guy's costume, uh, and it was so spectacular. And then the girl's thing was so sad. But we're going to finish this one up. But it's good for classes because we were able to show a lot of different stuff with this one. Oh, is it hooked on its hand? Oh, it's hooked on its hand. Oh, good. We're good. Just suck in. You're missing all the fun below the waist here. There, we got it. Um, except I like really goofed up the dress from here. Let's give that a hook. So if this were our girl, even a little further back, that's perfect. Um, if this were our girl, we've got a pretty good shape going on. Um, yeah, will it go? She's like, she might be just a little. This was made for someone and not the dress one. Ugh. Okay, so like if this were my prima ballerina. I'm pretty darn happy with the shape of what's going on. But if you wanted to repurpose this, if it was too plucky, if it was, if you were getting something weird like that, or um, sometimes we'll call it cereal bowling. If your tutu is cereal bowling, it means you've got too much hoop. Right now we've got a pretty flat thing, but I want to show you how quickly with the hoop we can turn this into more of a bell. And actually this year Jared and I are, uh, flowers at Barrow Beach Ballet were a little too plucky and we um, we did this trick on the girls and it's good this what I'm going to show you you want to do on them this is put together so well I have no idea where the opening in the back is thank you I've got it okay so what I'm going to do is too much hoop you get a cereal bowl to correct that if you've tacked over the hoop if you've got your tutu tacked together if you just pull the hoop, look at that. You can make a flat tutu into an English bell instantly by shrinking the hoop. So we've gone from like, you know, young maiden to Pharaoh's daughter court shape here. Just, you know, I can really show it extreme just by pulling in the hoop a little bit and actually from full size down to just a little bit more of a bell, I'm only taking out about like six inches. So it's surprising what those little adjustments for the hoop do. And actually with the connectors, um, glue in one side, connect the other side, and start with just a little bit extra 
then on your purse and edit away the hoop that you don't need, then glue the last side after you've finished it up. Um, and when you're trying to figure out what to cut the hoop with, I've tried different things over the years. Uh, I don't know if you still have a Sears around you, but what I did is I took hoop wire to Sears and I just asked if I could try different pliers until I found something that worked really well. And this brand is Greenly. Who knows? It looks like a superhero logo on it. Um, but bolt cutters work really well too. I like these because I can get up in there, you know, like an auto mechanic laying underneath the dancer and clip, clip stuff away. Um, a little more talk about casings. Then we will take a couple half two questions and we will be done. Oh, this is so cute. We've got to finish this. It's spectacular. Um, let's see. Get her out of the way. Let's see. So the first casing, if I think I can actually illustrate these with paper just as well as I can with net because the net doesn't show through when it's a single layer. Let's say this is the first casing we did that's a strip. I know it's a piece of paper. It's net coming away from the body. If we want a hoop, figure out where you want your hoop further out, longer, flatter, closer in, more easy to angle down and turn into a bell, right? Okay. The first one, our layer was 13 inches, but we actually cut 16. Then what we did is just folded it over like that and put a stitch an inch and a half over. So we went dip, 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 like that. We'll sew it together with some pins. There, that's my sewing for today. Then when this flips out, you have a casing and you only have to stitch and pin one time. That's like the fold underneath a layer. The oldie timey one, which is still a good one, is you've got your layer. Then you just cut a strip. Oh, I mangled that. You just cut a strip of netting and stitch each side of it. Stitch each side of that where you want your casing to go. And actually, you know, this little pink one, our casings are about an inch and apart. If you do like two or three inches even of space, it's a little bit of play for the hoop, which is which is better than it being so secured in exactly one spot. If there's a little bit of ease in the hoop, better off. So that's the second one, the pink one we did. And what's in this colorful, in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tutu that we were looking at earlier, here's what we pretty much always now do in the shop. We take two layers. Boy, this is like the worst notebook ever because it was from a fancy art store. Um, so what we do is we take our two layers. So let's say this is layer five, and I'm looking underneath the two to right? There's layer five. Here's layer six. I'm underneath her. There's layer six. We stitch the short edge together, and then we just put one stitch way out here so the hoop can have a little bit of play in this whole area. But with the sprung steel, if you make a circle that ends there, it's gonna pretty much stay there. Then you just put a couple tacks here and there over the hoop, however you like to tack. Then what's nice is if you've tacked over this hoop around the tutu, you have essentially kind of narrowed the casing to the area where the hoop really is. Then like I pulled the, pulled the hoop to shrink that tutu. If you pull the hoop on this one, it will it will change the pitch or the angle of the tutu also. So apply a strip, make a fold, or use two layers together to stitch one channel or multiple channels. That's it. I went a minute over. It's a good thing I talked a lot and really fast. Um, we could take like questions for like three minutes. Because I got to get to the post office. Do, 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 do. Are there any questions? Some people are just now realizing that there's a box where you can type questions. I should have explained that at the beginning.
Janelle says that you can also sew through the hoop wire if needed. Janelle says you can sew through this stuff. Uh, and I believe it because I've actually done it before. Um, they actually show them that jellyfish up there. That jellyfish is a hoop skirt with three hoops in it that lights up with vinyl tops. Um, uh, at, on location, we actually stitched two, two pieces of the hoop stuff together and overlapped the edge. And then we even stitched some of the lighting elements in a few spots. In, in between the bands of steel, you can poke a needle pretty easily. I like looking at myself on the screen, if you haven't figured that out. Someone asked if we do webinars on making the tutus. We do. Someone said, what? Do you do webinars on making tutus? Here's the plug. Go to halcyonstage.com. H-A-L-S-E-Y. It's not on my hat or on my shirt or on my apron. Halcy on stage. Click classes, and you'll see that there are new webinars and there are old webinars, and you can buy either of them, and we take you through making absolutely everything. See if you can find me a fancy bodice, too. Is there like a bodice, or even the one that goes with that? Because it's fun to show off, but it was fun to show this stuff off. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So in our webinars, we teach um, patterning, which is like the thing I stress the most. I'm going to pretend this fits me. <sighs> we teach patterning, which is like the foundation for everything in this business. If you can't make pattern, learn. Um, and it's weird that I teach patterning because I also sell patterns. It's like, what? I want everybody to learn how to flat pattern. Draping's good too, learn to flat pattern. Um, but we teach bodice making classes. Woo, woo, woo. There's like painter's tape holding pieces of the bodice in there. Um, we do bodice classes. We've got tutu classes. We've got decorating classes. We have quick change magic leotard classes. We've got tunic classes. We've got airbrush basic classes. We have iPad costume rendering classes. Um, and again, you can take new ones and you can also watch old ones. Um, and with the class, uh, some of them you get a pattern and some of them, oh, all of them, you get a recording so you can rewatch it. Uh, does hoopwire.com ship to the UK? Hoopwire.com, do we ship to the UK? Answer coming in. I'm betting yes. Oh, ours is Halsey, H-A-L-S-E-Y, on stage, on stage .com. And also, if you look us up on Instagram and on Facebook, there's all kinds of visual fertilizer there um, to have fun with. There's so many questions coming in. Oh, gosh, there's a bunch. Okay, no more questions from here. No more, but we're going to answer what we've got. Uh, but uh, Janelle says they ship everywhere. They ship everywhere. To answer the UK question, buy the 500 foot one because from what we find shipping stuff, it's better to ship something that's kind of heavy and pay a bit more than to ship something that's small. Where do you buy the ProLine Rit dye? Someone said, where do we get the ProLine dye? I just buy it from Rit.com. And it's like, there's the top thing, the middle thing, something. And then later on is the ProLine stuff. And this is hard to believe that this little baggie is a pound. Um, and I also find that the ProLine stuff is a little more concentrated um, than the, the small boxes or the liquid. And I actually think, you know, the the... the they're like I think of it like the grown up box, the writ dye, those little rectangles. The the that box of pink, say, takes way more than a tiny bit of this pink. Like this stuff is a lot stronger. And what they said too today on the phone is it's just got chemicals that make it even you know, the um you pay a little bit more, but I think it goes a lot farther. So I think you actually save money by buying this stuff. And Janelle says with the powder dye, make sure it's completely dissolved. Janelle says, make sure the powder dye is completely dissolved or you will get dye freckles. Uh, people just want to see the bodice with the tutu. Oh, well, let's get the red bodice. Oh, let's put it on the tutu. Yeah. Do you want to grab the red bodice over there? Do, 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 do. It's not done, but it will be done. That's what you call a showstopper. Um, 
and then, right, we'll just hold this one here. Then this, this thing's been used a lot. It was on the side of a bus for a few years and in a billboard. Um, this is the bodice that goes with that one. So in our webinars, we teach all the, all the little insider, they're not insider secrets. I've just made loads and loads and loads and loads of tutus. And I'll show you just anything I can think of. We're writing books, reserve yours today. A lot of people did already. Thank you. You'll be hearing from me if you reserved a book to make sure we get your name right. Um, I have this fear of like listing someone's husband's name or wife's name when it was just their PayPal account and not actually. Oh, this is so much prettier to look at than me. Got some velvet, got some stuff. Look at, it looks like there's like 9 million seams on the outside. There's not as many on the inside. It's a trick. Look, it's even hand beaded. Can you see that? Do you see those little, do you see the little bugle beads there? I mean, that's, what ballerina wouldn't want to wear that? Is that about it? No more new questions. Uh, and then just, um, can you explain that if they didn't, weren't here the whole time that it will be emailed to them? Yeah, everybody, so the, um, the webinar company will process this video and it should be, since we were only a little over an hour, it should be done in my inbox by like six or seven o'clock tonight. And then I will send it out tonight to absolutely everybody or I will send it in the morning. And with this and all of our webinars, we say um, if the go to webinar company goes bankrupt, we're all out of luck because um, we have more video content than even NASA could store, I'm afraid. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you from Janelle and John at HoopWire.com. I think it's John. It's John.